And the church today is nothing but an empty shell of what it had once been. People are sick and tired of these dead churches that do not preach the Word of God. They're tired of them. They're tired of dead preachers. They're tired of dead religion. They're tired of the whole stinking dead mess. And they're looking for some life. And there is life in Christ. Amen. When the power of the Holy Ghost begins to move, people get saved. When the power of the Holy Spirit begins to move, people get healed. When the power of the Holy Spirit begins to move, people are delivered. When the power of the Holy Spirit begins to move, families are brought back together again. Children come back to their parents. Homes that were broken up are healed. Families are put back together. It's because of the power of the Holy Spirit of God. All God has ever needed is a preacher that would stand up and open the Bible and preach the Word of God. He calls his men to preach God's Word. That's all he's ever called for. And once he has that, the power of God begins to move in the midst of a bunch of people. Talk about three things this morning that they don't talk about today. Number one is sin. You live in a self-centered, selfish world with people that that all they think about is themselves and here's how they've been here's how they've been raised they come into a generation where everything's been handed to them they feel entitled they feel special and so therefore when they're introduced to religion they take the same attitude into their churches that they've been raised in they feel entitled they feel special they feel like there's something wonderful about them that God sees in them. And so therefore they adjust their theology to fit that. In plain words, you live in the midst of people who go through a cafeteria line of spirituality and they borrow from Buddha, they borrow from Christ, they borrow from Mohammed, they borrow from here and literally create their own big salad of religion. That's what's happening. And the churches are full of people like that. They're everything and nothing. The church today that you go hear them sit on their little stool. He dresses like he's been out here somewhere on Fifth Avenue. He gets up there and looks at you like you're like you, you know, like you're crazy if you come in with a suit of clothes on. And he gets up there and talks to you in a nice monotone voice, and there's no preaching and no power. And he does that because he doesn't believe anything. The churches today do not believe that the Bible is really relevant. And they'll tell you that the Bible is so complicated that what you do from Scripture is just pull out little tidbits that speak to you and that you enjoy and let that be the guiding principle in your life. But as far as believing that that book right there is the absolute authority over who you are and what you believe, they don't believe that. Well, let me tell you something, folks. If your faith, if that's what you want to call it, it's no more than a smorgasbord of attitudes and feelings of things that you pull out of the Bible than your faith is, looks like a piece of, 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 of uh, Swiss cheese shot full of holes. No basis, won't hold water. And then when it comes time for you to need some faith, you got none. And so therefore these people are not, uh, they're not brought together by what they believe. They're brought together by how they feel. Everything today in the church house is appealing to the flesh. All the music, all the dramas, all the little skits, everything is so superficial, so thin-skinned. If there ever was a bunch of people that go to a church house, it's today when people have no root, no foundation, no soul. And anything that moves them emotionally then they enjoy that because that's all their religion is, something like that. So this is why you never hear a preacher in these churches preach about sin. But the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter number 5, it says this about sin. It says, Wherefore by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Now, I can't preach a whole message this morning. i got other things to say about sin. But I'm going to tell you, folks, the word itself, to be so little, S-I-N, is such a big issue because we all got a problem with sin. Sin will kill you. Sin will break your home up. Sin will destroy your health. 
Sin will take your money away. Sin will rob you of your joy. Sin will put a wall between you and God. Sin will take away from you far more than you ever thought it would. Sin is a killer. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. You can't sugarcoat it. You can't make it look good. You can't make excuses for it. You can't explain it away. What do you do with it, preacher? You get it under the blood. <laughs> the only thing that you can do with sin is repent of it and plead the blood of Christ to cleanse you and cleanse your conscience and cleanse your walk and give you faith and give you power to overcome whatever besetting sin is destroying your life. Thank mm -hmm. you.